everyone, welcome to therevitkid.com. Today we're going to talk about parking. In case you haven't noticed, the default parking spaces in Revit are flat. They're families that stay flat. But in the real world, parking lots are not flat. And so today I just want to go through a technique that uses the railing tool to create parking striping and really change your game when it comes to site development in Revit. What I have here is a piece of topography in Revit. Now, I know your parking lots will probably not be this dramatic, I hope not at least, but I wanted to use this as an example to show you how powerful this technique can be. So by default, in Revit, if you were to use the open, the um, out-of-the-box uh, templates, there is a parking component family. So if I go to parking component, you can see there's some different spacings. But of course, if you're on a relatively flat surface, it's going to try and do its best. And so that's a flat surface. Up here, we have a gentle slope to it. And you can see what's happening is it's actually contouring. The parking stripe is contouring to it. The problem is if you start getting a little bit more of a slope, as you can see as I go down here, this parking stripe does not conform. And so obviously, like I said, this, this is a pretty dramatic um, setup here. But uh, the reality is if, if I had a little bit more of a slope, let's say a, a 10 or 5% slope or something like that, uh, you can see how this can be a little bit of an annoyance. Okay, and for those of you who have drawn and, uh, and created parking lots in Revit, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to take advantage of a tool called the railing tool. And in 2017 and 18, you have the ability, in 19, you have the ability to uh, conform uh, the railing tool to your topography. So we're going to take advantage of that. So what are we going to do first? First, I'm just going to draw a railing so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So if I go to architecture, I go to railing. I'm going to go to my top down view just so that I can see. And I'm just going to draw a railing that goes down like this. And then I'm going to click finish. Uh, by default, you can see the railings down there. I can actually now click pick new host and I can select my topography. And you'll notice what happens is that railing actually follows the topography. Okay, so what does that mean for striping? Well, if we modify this railing and we make it our striping, then we can actually make our striping follow any topography. And I'm talking about um, parking stripes here, but you could also do like uh, the middle of the road and, and dividers and, and stuff like that and different uh, lanes on roads and whatnot. And you can use this for a lot of different things. So what are we going to do? We're going to actually create our own uh, railing profile. So if you'll notice, if I zoom in, this railing profile is a, is a square, um, but we have the ability to change the width and the height of it. So we're going to modify the existing. So I'm going to go down to families. I'm going to go down to profiles. And I'm going to look for where it says rectangular handrail. And you can see it says rectangular handrail. And we have a two inch by two inch and a two inch by three inch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and say new type. And I'm going to call this parking stripe. Now, depending on where you're located, uh, you can double click this and you can change it. Depending on where you're located, the width and the height may be different. But uh, what I like to do is try to make the width something that makes sense. So usually around here, it's six to eight inches. So I'm going to do six inches. And the height, even though uh, in reality, this doesn't have much height, it's really just paint on the ground. You want to give it a little bit because it's, it's actually going to be just a tad above the topography. So I usually like to go with something like six inches. And then we'll change the offset when the time comes. So parking stripe six by six and click OK. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our rectangular handrail. And I actually typically would like would would start with the um, the guardrail just because it already has profiles in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to my guardrail um, pipe, and I'm going to edit this type. I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to call it parking stripe. Then I'm going to go into my rail structure. I'm going to delete all of the rails except for one. You can give it a name if you want. I'm going to set the height to zero. The offset for now will say zero. We can modify it afterwards. And I'm going to select my parking stripe profile. So where it says profile, I'm going to say parking stripe. And then of course we want to give it a material. So I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to rename it parking stripe. Uh, for now, I won't worry about the rendering. I'm just going to, oopsies, parking stripe. Apparently it's already in use, so let's use it. Parking stripe, look at that, there's already one in this file. Um, so 
create parking stripe, make sure it's yellow, click OK, click apply, click OK. The last thing we want to do is we want to get rid of the balusters because we don't need these verticals in between. So I'm going to go baluster and I'm going to put everything here to none. So all of these here for baluster families are going to be none. And then click OK, click OK. Now you can see we've got our striping. So before we talk about the top rail, you'll notice this is sticking up a little bit, but what we want to do is we want to, we want to bump this up a teeny bit. So we're actually going to go back into our family, select it, go to edit type. We're going to change our rail structure and we're going to have an offset, offset of, let's just say one inch for now and click apply, click OK, click apply and click OK. Now, if you have a very, very dramatic slope like we have here, you might need to go a little more than one inch. But for now, one inch is going to do. So now you notice we have these top rails. This is something that specific versions of Revit um, have in, in them. So if I go to edit type, we want to turn off our top rail. And then we want to turn off our handrail one to none. So they have a top rail and then there's a handrail one, which is to the left to right handrail. Click apply and now those go away. Now I'm still not liking the offset, so I'm going to tweak that just a little bit. I'm sorry, offset was wrong. Let's go to height. So leave offset where it is. Change the height to one inch, click apply, click OK, apply, and there we go. Offset was left to right, height is up and down. So now you see we have a stripe that can follow topography. So now if I go to my top down view, I can create parking lots just by clicking create similar. I can simply do things like this, click finish, pick to host, and there we go. We've got a parking stripe and look at that, that's pretty dramatic, right? And there's different ways you can do it. You can do one at a time, um, or if you want, you can do, uh, what I would suggest is you do something like this, uh, click finish, pick to host, and then you can copy or array this. I mean, it all depends on how you wanna do it. But you can see how quickly and easily you can create roads and parking striping now. If I pull this across there. And again, the cool thing about this is, check it out, it actually follows your topography. So that's the quick tip of the day. Uh, have an awesome week, everyone, and I'll talk to you all soon.